Hello viewers, thank you very much for watching today. So remember we talked about tools used in community diagnosis. And earlier on, when I was introducing community diagnosis, it talked about making the process scientific. It's not a matter of guessing here and there, make the process scientific. And one of the making the process to be scientific is sampling. So sampling is the process of selecting a number of individuals or units of the study population in such a way that the individuals selected represent the larger groups from which they are selected. You know, you'll have a big population. Maybe just say 1,000. You cannot interview all the 1,000. So you need to get amongst them to represent the whole group. That's what we call sampling. So this is done by calculating the sample size using Fisher's et al. formula. You don't just wake up and say, because they are, this community has a thousand people, I'm going to interview 500. How did you get the 500? If you do that, there will be errors, and that will not be scientific. So the researcher should know how to identify the correct respondents depending on the chosen sampling technique. Study population, let us look at study population. This is the entire group of individuals, events or objects that have common observable characteristics. Types of study population, we have accessible population and representative sample. Accessible population is a group of individuals, objects and events with characteristics comparable to the target population and relevant to the study. Representative sample is a group from the study population which has all the important characteristics of the total population. Now, we have different sampling methods. How to identify your respondents? So you have to develop a sampling frame, and this is a list of all units that make up the study population. So you have two groups of sampling technique, probability sampling and non-probability sampling. When you talk about probability sampling, we are referring to the following. One, this one is where it looks at the entire group of individuals that have common observable characteristics. So the most commonly used methods under probability sampling is simple random sampling, systematic sampling, stratified sampling, and multi-stage sampling. And then you also have non-probability sampling. These are used when a researcher is not interested in selecting a sample that is representative of the population. This is usually used in qualitative studies where, where the focus is on in-depth information rather than making generalization. Examples of non-probability sampling methods are convenient sampling, quarter sampling, and purposive sampling. Now you have done all that, you want to execute the survey. So the actual survey is carried out with the interviewers in the field. So interviewing the respondents, and then data collection, data handling, and data analysis. It is always important, every day after, after getting your data, you, you hold a brief post-data collection meeting in order to share the day's experiences. Maybe there were challenges which can be handled before you go to the field the following day. So from there now, you need to do data analysis, which is data entry and anal analysis in order to interpret the findings. You know, when you have the data, you cannot interpret it. You have to put it, you have to analyze it, you have, you have to analyze it, and then you see these numbers mean 50% are, are in this age group, 10% are in this age group, 90% take, take three meals a day. 10% take one meal a day. You see, now you are interpreting the data. That is all for today. Thank you very much. Continue sharing your comments. We shall now look at data analysis in our next session.